Hi there, this is Farrell. Welcome to the video. It's page 14 of issue 2 of Robot Todd. This is like a fully watercolored comic that I've been working on slowly over the last couple years. Uh, so I didn't, uh, I didn't do some videos this time of the pencil process. I just, I had a lot of stuff going on. I was helping take care of my mom and uh, sisters moving and blah, blah, blah. Stuff you probably all don't care about, but <laughs> kind of kept me from posting, so I'm full of excuses. But yeah, here's the kind of finished pencils, or roughly finished, or close to fin being finished pencils. Um, yeah, I did the, uh, I did it without a thumbnail. I don't think I thumbnailed this page at all, but um, while I was drawing this first panel, I was just trying to get a sense of the scale of how big this like whale shark creature dragon thing, whatever it is, this big creature that swallows Robot Todd, uh, how big it was. And um, I had in my mind that it's like this enormous thing, you know, like as big as one of these buildings that he's swimming around. But um, I uh, I was having kind of a, trying to figure out how to, how to show that. So I did a thumbnail for the next page, which you'll see in the next video, um, or the video after the next video. Um, because I, I was also working on a, a sugar and spike commission, like a big commission uh, that I'm gonna post next time. But yeah, so this is me uh, inking with a brush. It's Raphael 8404. And I think I'm, I've, I've moved down to a number two. So I'm just using a number two brush instead of my number four, which I used for years. Um, yeah, so you can see, I, I don't know if you could, you could tell there in the, I tried to slow the, the uh, um, time lapse down a little bit, but um, I was trying to make like, outline outline first everything like the in, inside of the panel and around robot todd all the little areas that i knew would be like you know i couldn't just do big you know and and while i'm while i was inking him with the fine line uh i'd fill up the uh the brush and and twirl it to get like a fine point on the uh sort of the negative space in the background there so it's like killing two birds with one stone kind of thing. Cause I had knew I had to fill all that in. And I, I do that on a separate piece of paper usually to get my brush to a point. And then after I did that, I started inking the rest, uh, as I've been doing all the previous pages, uh, with a fabric castell pit pen. I just kind of inked the, the rest of the, the characters that are in the foreground. And this one's kind of a little tricky cause there's like a reflection on the glass. And I, I just figured, Oh, I'll just have, ink the reflection and the, you know, since the character in the foreground is inked, just ink the reflection as well. But then I ended up actually using some black ink on some of the building shadows and the the building that they're swimming in front of. I almost kind of counted that as like a character instead of a background. So I inked quite a bit of that with the brush. You can see later, but initial, I just started, initially I just started uh, watercoloring it with the pen, you know, just the pencils in the background. Uh, but as, as I was working on each stage, I was like, ah, I feel like that needs to go darker and needs to go darker. And even after I scanned the finished piece, um, I was looking at it on my computer screen. I was like, ah, I probably could have gone a little darker with some of the dark, the shadows and the lower, lower halves of the panels. But uh, looking at this video now, I, I rather like it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. And I guess the idea was that Robot Todd, and you can see in the last the last page, um, when he comes out of the uh, the little f flue that you know was in the underground chamber that he got pushed through, he comes out into this sort of body of water. It's like the lake that he initially went down, and there's like the sunken city in there, like covered up post apocalyptic city. And I wanted him just to be like swimming, and I got this idea when I was working on the previous page, the idea of him like swimming his sensors are all kind of like messed up but like he's swimming by this reflection of this uh this built you know the, these windows reflecting him but you can see there's like a monster right on his heels in the reflection but you don't really see the monster in the uh in the foreground that much just like a little bit of a hint of one you can kind of see the hint of his mouth there so you don't really you know this panel and you, you don't really understand how big it is and then the second panel, you're like, oh, it's really big. And then on the next page, you're going to see it's like this enormous uh, creature. So, yeah, I actually got the idea for the third panel of just making it all black as I was drawing the, the top panel. So it was just like, 
the idea was like, okay, he doesn't, his sensors aren't working. He doesn't see this creature behind him, but he kind of just sort of senses that there's something there. And then in the second panel, he turns around and is kind of like surprised, like, oh, that's a big thing. But before he can even really do anything about it, it, the thing swallows him up and there's like no light. You know, he's like kind of trying to maybe like start to project something, but like I figure just like the reader can see Todd, you know, we can see him because I can, you know, do that with a comic book. Um, like if this was like a movie or something, I guess it's all animation now anyway, so it, it probably wouldn't that be that big of a deal. But like, I just, I think this kind of thing is just sort of fun to do with comics that, uh, you know, just sort of playing with the light and, you know, it doesn't have to be like realistic or anything, you know, like, I mean, I, I guess if, if, Todd, if everything was black inside the creature, there's like no light except the stuff that was coming from him. You wouldn't even really see him, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just thought graphically it looked kind of cool. So <laughs> that's basically what it is. Uh, I don't know why I'm trying to explain it. Um, so yeah, here I'm, uh, I, I just, I, it took me a, like a little, there was like a little bit of a shift where I had to get from, okay, like I'm done with the pencils. I got to start inking it. And then once I was done inking it, I was like, okay, kind of got to make myself watercolor. It's, it's, it, I was thinking it's going to be like easy just to jump into the next phase, but it always takes, I have to like motivate myself a little, like talk to myself to do it. Like, okay, you got this. You can do this. You can, you know how to paint. You've done this a million times or a thousand times or whatever, 10,000 hours worth of watercoloring at this point. So, uh, you know, you can do it, and it's like, and once I lay that first brush, you know, the first bits of color down, it's like, okay, yeah, I, I remember, how I can do this, it's no, no big deal, <laughs> I don't know why I was so, like, freaked out by, freaked out by it, um, I think probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks, as far as in the color stage, because, um, the pencils didn't take me all that long, considering, um, uh, it was more just, like, kind of the pauses in between working on it. I just couldn't work on it every day. I just had too much stuff going on. But yeah, the the probably the, the biggest, hardest part for me was this, the creature's mouth, you know? Like once I started painting the inside of its mouth, it's like, oh, I like the way that looks. But I don't know if you can see that in the second panel, it doesn't quite look like the same thing as the first panel. Um, I mean, you, you have to like zoom in to kind of see the shape of it. So I went in with some white out, uh, not white out, but like white paint, you know, mixed with some gouache and watercolor and stuff and tried to sort of emulate the, the, the frame, the, the, the shape and composition or whatever of the little mouth thing that's reaching out and grabbing him. I was thinking it was kind of like one of those like xenomorph and aliens where it's like, it kind of extends out and, you know, just like swallows up the, you know, bites and, you know, retracts and goes back inside its body. Um, this creature here, I was thinking it's like, it just kind of like sucks in everything like a whale shark or something, uh, and then kind of ejects it out the other end and also kind of helps propel it through the water. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, after I, I started the background, I kind of just laid a flat, that, that in, intense watercolor, liquid watercolor down. Um, that's diluted. I mean, they, they say it's intense, like on the label, it says something like that. Um, but I, I used a lot of water, diluted. I actually squirted a couple. I had two different tones that I used. I don't remember exactly what they are right now, but um, uh, two different types of blue, and I squirted them in glasses, just a couple of drops. You can kind of see in the last bit, you could kind of see one of them over there on the left, um, and they dried, and I was kind of just using my wet brush to sort of like take a little bit and then, you know, maybe add some water or maybe just kind of roll it on the on a... a Piece, scrap piece of paper just to see how it looked and you know get just to get the right feel and consistency when I went in and kind of added details and stuff because you know I start with like adding just general okay I'm just covering everything in blue and then kind of going back in and being like okay I'm just going to add darker blue more intense blue to this area more intense you know kind of and sort of drawing while I'm painting uh, and then went in and added any little ex additional colors I wanted you know like adding the making that creature purple and, you know, the magenta and all the different things I got going on and the other little fishes, like orange and green and what have you. But that's pretty much the finished page there. Um, it's the scan. Um, you can always tell when it's a scan when you don't, can't see my desk and thumbs and <laughs> different things on the, on the side hatches.
So if you like this video and you're interested in more Robot Todd, I have a Patreon. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye.